Morning Show with your boy, Dr. LT and Robert LD. Robert LD, who we got with us today? We have this phenomenal singer who is blazing the charts with a friend of ours. We'll let him tell you who it is. None other than Mr. Patrick Dobson. Welcome to the Wake Up Morning Show, my brother. Thank you so much, gentlemen. It's good to be with you and uh, thankful for, for brand new mercies today, a brand new day. Yes, yes, yes. Let's jump right in it. How'd you Absolutely. get how'd you get started in music? You seem to come out of nowhere. <laughs> well, uh everybody comes from somewhere, right. so we know we, <laughs> right. we traced it back to Granddaddy Adam. Yeah. But uh but we're so glad, you know, to join uh you guys today and yeah. um just to give you a little history, my uh upbringing was, was very unique. I grew up uh in a pastor's home in the south in Alabama. My parents pastored in Selma, Alabama. I was born in Montgomery. Wow. And uh, my mom was always our minister of music. And so she always did such a wide variety of music. And, and you know, it was very an un, a very unusual upbringing because uh, our church in Selma was one of the only churches that had any integration whatsoever. And wow. so it was a real phenomenon. And, um, and so uh, in that time, my mom, you know, she introduced me to so much music from Shirley Caesar to the the Winans, uh, Mississippi Mass Choir. Wow. In fact, Mississippi Mass Choir came through through our city one time, and I, I was so mesmerized by them. And then, of course, we did Southern Gospel. We did Bill Gaither stuff. We did Brooklyn yes. Tab. And, yes. And so uh, I just really gravitated to gospel because it was just sung with such passion. And so uh, one of my favorite groups was the Winans and commissioned, and I, I just was moved, you know, listening and it just grabbed me as a young child. You know, I remember trying to, even at eight years old, trying to mimic the whinings and, and, and you know, those certain tones. And, and uh, it just something that I grew to love. Um, it really helped shape, you know, even my personal culture growing mm -hmm. up. And, mm -hmm. and so that's kind of how everything started. And then when I graduated, got out of the house, I had two options. I could go to college and play football uh, or take a full-time music minister position. Ended up following the Lord, and uh, the rest is history. So I, I, uh, I love God's church, love His kingdom, yes. love His people, and yes. I love gospel music. Okay, so you know, I got, I got two questions. Yes. Uh, first of all, a rumor has it that you love the whining so much that you came to church one day dressed like one of the whiners in the three-piece suits. Was is that true? Listen. <laughs> There's many times I went to church dressed in a three-piece suit. Right. In, in fact, if you dig enough on the internet, you'll find a picture of me from Easter. Uh, probably, oh my, I want to say I was probably 12 years old. Uh -huh. Me and my brothers, I had two brothers. We were all two years apart, and each of us had purple suits. I'm oh, talking about purple as could be. And we, we, you couldn't tell us nothing. That was a quartet uh, and, uh, group. That was a quartet group. Uh, okay. Yeah, we were. We were real. We we were real church boys. And right. So, uh, you know, uh, I played the drums um, coming up, and so uh, yeah, church was our life. Okay. So here's another important question because you said Alabama. So I just need to know: Is it Roll Tide or is it Auburn? Which where are you at? Listen, it's Roll Tide. So see, <laughs> we, we got to roll with the champions. See? Oh, he going saying. with the winners. Yeah. yeah so, my, now my wife, she's an Auburn fan. Okay, I'm, I'm an Alabama fan. Have been. Uh, very interesting story. I uh, we lived in Tuscaloosa for a total of four years, and uh, in that time, I got to do some chaplaincy work with a team back when Sean Alexander was playing on the team. Mm -hmm. And uh, man, it was just a great experience. So it, it further enhanced my fanism. Yeah. So uh, I'm a, I'm a, I'm definitely a Bama fan. Okay, because you don't have to ask that question because right. I know a lot of folks from Alabama, and that's a bone of contingency when, when oh, you wow. get into Alabama. So how is, you must have an anointed woman of God who, who is the <laughs> queen of her castle, because for her to be a, a Auburn fan and you a roll tie, that, 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 there seems to be a conflict, conflict of interest in, in, the, in, the, in the household. It's a major division, and I've got two boys, and I've, I've already converted them. You know, the Bible says train up in a, ch a child in the way they should <laughs> And so, uh, but but she's really gracious to us, you know. But uh, come the Iron Bowl that day, you know, things get a little contentious. Y'all, you y'all get your own wings. I'm not cooking no wings. Get I'm your own drink. Bring no, your own food, wait, 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 I got my snacks. I hope y'all got yours. Right. right. Every man for himself and God for all. Serve yourself. Serve yourself. Right. 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 So, so I see that you 
had a top selling album in 2012. Let's talk about your single, Keep Me. Yes, sir. God really did some amazing things. Uh, th that first album and just, um, you know, that song, Keep Me, was a song that I had actually written in 2004. And uh, it was a song that just came to me out of some desperation and uh, pursuing God. And, and so I released it um, 2012, actually mm -hmm. 2011, and it didn't really catch a stride until 2012. But uh, a major turning point for me was uh, we had sent it to radio and, and it, it, you know, people were interested in it. They didn't know know too much about me but uh they liked the song and then uh I, I sang i was scheduled to sing at the radio awards for the stellar awards that year wow uh during the radio awards and it was like that was the turning point and and god used that moment to really catapult that song as well as my ministry and and in that room you know i was able to truly minister and uh the song took off and and uh ended up i think peaking at number six Wow. Uh, on Billboard, and it was the number one most played song on, on Sirius XM for like three consecutive months wow. there. And uh, it was just amazing to see the hand of God. But, uh, you know, th that song was really re written out of a broken place, mm. and, and uh, you know, God used it for his glory. Let me ask you a question. How, how was it to work with Uncle John P? You know, I love Pastor Keith. Somebody asked me that the other day, and, and uh, I was actually, 2006 to 2008, I was living here in Dallas, uh, touring and writing and working with Fred Hammond. And uh, in that time, uh, Pastor Keith called me, and he has a way of getting numbers. We don't know how he does it. Yes, he does. <laughs> he has a way of getting in touch with people, and he's, he's notorious for that. And my phone rang one day, and he said, hey, this is... John P. Key, and uh, I want you to sing on one of my albums. And I said, okay, is this really John P. Key, right. you know? Uh, and so ended up connecting there, and uh, I was able to record a, a few projects with him. And uh, and then coming to this, you know, fast forwarding to this single, Make It All Right, mm -hmm. uh, I really knew I needed, a, I needed a real voice, like from the church. Yes. And originally, um, you know, I was thinking of, of a few others and, and it just landed in my gut, you know, call Pastor Key. And so I picked up the phone. I was in the studio, picked up the phone and called him. And before I could even finish asking, he said, I'm on it. He wow. said, I'm going to do it. And I was just, I was blown away, you know, because it's one thing to be able to work with somebody you love and honor and appreciate, mm -hmm. but then it's a whole nother thing to have them featured, you know, on your, your personal work and, <laughs> So it was, it was a huge blessing, but I love him. I honor him. Uh, I, I, I want to say this just about him is that uh, he has shared his ministry and platform. He is not, he is stewarded well. He's a kingdom man. Yes. And he is stewarded well. And one statement he said to me uh, years ago, he said, Patrick, he said, in my home, and I have a few stories. And he said, there's an elevator in my home. And he said, if I've got an elevator, and you can ride the elevator with me, I'm not going to make you take the stairs just because I took the stairs. Mm -hmm. He said, He said, you know, years ago, I may have had, had to take the stairs myself. He said, but now I've got an elevator. And he said, I'm going to let you ride with me. So mm -hmm. that told me everything wow. I need to know about that man. And, wow. uh, you know, he just, uh, I'm sorry, can you guys still see me? I thought I yes, had to Yeah, we, you we still see you. Okay. But uh, I just... You know, was so appreciative of, of just him, you know, stewarding his gift well and, and making room for others. Now, now, there's a rumor out there oh, Lord. that you and Fred Hammonds are really cousins. I was thinking the same thing. You know, his uh, lighter cousin. Yeah, yeah. So I just want to know, is there any oh, truth to God. that rumor? We don't want to court. Well, listen, I love Fred Hammond. Fred Hammond was very good to me and uh, <laughs> actually, you know, took me on tour with him, let me open for him. And uh, we connected back in 2004, and uh, he asked me in 2006 to move to Dallas to do some work with him. And, uh, you know, a great friendship. And uh, I'm be actually best friends with his brother, Dave, who mm -hmm. is my booking manager. Right. And, uh, and so uh, Fred lives probably two miles from me right now. And, and, uh, and so uh, I'm sure appreciative of his, his influence. I mean, my goodness, I, I used to sit 
and uh, you know, listen to commission. I, and I didn't really know the guys by name. I right. didn't know Keith Stage, right. Marvin Stade. Right. You know, I just knew them as commission. But I knew this one voice that stuck out. That I was just like, okay, that's that's. I like this guy. Yeah. You know? And so of course he's part of my musical DNA, and and uh, as well as Pastor Key, Bishop Marvin Winans. You know, so uh, you know, it's it's a blessing to have relationship with those that poured into your life when they didn't even know it. Exactly. You know? Okay, so I'm going to ask this question. This is a little off, but just follow me on this one. Uh oh. You from Alabama. Yes. Can you give me one of the uh, back down home Alabama dishes that you still eat to this day? Oh, my goodness. Listen, uh, <laughs> you, you didn't put me on the spot because there's too many things. I mean, uh, greens, candied yams, cornbread. <laughs> I mean, rutabagas. Y'all don't know nothing about no rutabagas. Uh, see, that, uh, see do you hear yeah, he a, We ain't never heard of no rutabagas. What is that? <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's, like a it's a root, and uh, it turns orange whenever uh, it, it's, it's cooked and boiled, and you cut it up in cubes. And uh, But, yeah, I mean, of course, black-eyed peas. Uh, you know, we call them field peas. And, yeah. And uh, so, yeah, <laughs> cornbread. So I'm going to ask you this one question, and it's my last food question. Have okay. you ever had possum? Absolutely not. Okay. Because they'd be possums. Never, ever. They'd be possums too in the South, in Louisiana, when I was going to college. They'd be possums yeah, too. I, I, will never, I will never, ever uh, partake of, of possum. <laughs> no possum. Okay. Now, now let's, let's zoom into you serving in the church, which I, which I really, really like and admire how you are a worship leader with the one and only world renowned Pastor Tony Evans. How has that been? You know, it's been a it's been a great experience. Um, I, I, I tell people this, uh, especially having the opportunity to minister with so many people of notoriety mm -hmm. and, and how you know people that God have you God has used. There's two things that I, I I say to people. Either after I'm with them, and I know this might sound harsh, but <laughs> either after I'm with them, I say, I wish I'd never met them. Right. Or man, I'm glad I met them. <laughs> you know. Uh, because you have a certain idea of who people are, and mm -hmm. when you really get to know them, you get to know who they really are. Mm -hmm. And uh, Dr. Tony Evans is that man. I'm telling you, he is a kingdom man. Uh, I love his ministry. He has influenced me greatly. Uh, it's a pleasure and honor to, to, you know, to work closely with him and to steward the ministry God gave him. And uh, we, you know, when I came, I honestly didn't uh, expect to be in close fellowship just because of the nature of his demand. But, um, you know, he's fully accessible. I can call him any time of the day. In fact, wow. after this interview, I'm on a call with him. We'll be on a zoom together and, wow. and he, uh, has truly poured into our lives. And, uh, is, I want to say this, he, he's one of the greatest stewards that I've been around. You wow. know, uh, he, 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 he lives in a very common way. Uh, he, he, uh, is not arrogant. He is mm. not proud. He's, wow. he, he's, he just really truly demonstrates the heart of God and, uh, and, and the call of God is very important to him and, uh, he treats it uh, with honor and respect. And so, uh, I love him, love him so much. Let, let me ask you this question. Uh, this year has been a very, uh, 2020 was a very trying year. We saw, we had to go through the pandemic. We lost a lot of great people as well as we went through social unrest. Um, what is your message to uh, people today uh, through it all? What has been, what is your message that you would share? Well, you know, I would actually echo what my pastor has been sharing is that, you know, God, God uh, caused some things to divinely happen. You know, we, we look at certain things that take place in Come the on. world and we say, Oh, that's, the devil did that. No, mm -mm. some things God allows. Come on. And we're sitting, you know, sitting here rebuking the devil. Come when, on. Mm -hmm. You know, really, God ordained some things to happen mm -hmm. so it would yes. shake us up and get us back to him. Yes. And, uh, Revelation talks about, I think it's chapter two, talks about us returning to our first love. Well, yes. And, yes. Uh, and the Bible clearly tells us that our God is a jealous God. Yes, sir. You know, and that uh, there will be no other gods before him. And so whether that's come through economy, through politics, you know, through us feeling like we have a handle on health, uh, God has shaken up the church to do a divine reset. Oh, yes. And so, uh, you know, everything that God is doing is is orchestrated chaos so that we realize that the church better wake up and do its job yes. and stop living on this plane 
of social uh, issues, stop mm -hmm. living on this plane of political issues, Come on. stop living on this plane, plane of economic uh, mm -hmm. uh, issues. He says, you, you got to go deeper, church. I, I'm trying to wake y'all up because I want to do something special yes. in the land in the last day outpour. And if you're not awake, Come see, on. the church is already sick. Come you on. Know, and this situation could either make the church more sick Come on. or it could awaken it to its original purpose and intent. Yes. Amen. And so we're, we're praying that that happens. And, uh, you know, I don't I honestly don't think things will let up until the church gets in position and does its job. I agree. Amen. My last question to you. Before I turn over to Robert O'Dean, it's simply this. You, you, you mentioned that you have two sons, you know, um, and when we have children growing up in this time of social distancing and all of this, what are you sharing with your two sons, you know, that father to son moment to help them go through this and answer questions that they might uh, be uh, in the midst? Because it sounds like you are raising them in a very eclectic, well-rounded environment. How are you helping them through this time? Absolutely. I think, you know, I look back to my childhood and God kept me, especially being a white kid in the South. Yes. I was in a very diverse environment. Mm -hmm. You know, it was it was very ironic for, you know, typical upbringing. And, uh, you know, I was a, a student, white, one white student, and a student, uh, you know, I mean, 20, one of 20 white students in the student body of 700. Wow. You know, my 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 preferences, the, the culture around me shaped me to have that African-American leaning. Right. You know, so I've always been in a diverse setting, always been a part of multicultural churches. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it was important to have that in my home. And, and, yes. and, and that was God's design for us. Yes. You know? And uh, we, uh, you know, had challenges having children uh, biologically and God moved in our hearts to, fo uh, to foster and to adopt. And so uh, I have a 10 year old that we adopted uh, uh, at birth that's uh, biracial. Then I have a uh, uh, a six year old son, soon to be seven year old, uh, who is African American, who uh, came into our home at five months. Wow. And we adopted. And, um, and so we've had our own personal challenges. Yes. Uh, and believe it or not, and, and, and I, I shared this on a clubhouse uh, session the other night. We've experienced both sides mm -hmm. of racism, and wow. I know you know some people don't understand that, and it might raise a few eyebrows. But we've experienced on the white side, we've yes. experienced it on black side, and mm -hmm. so you know it's been a very challenging thing for us. And our kids are super aware. Kids are extremely mm -hmm. discerning. Yes, you know, uh, kids know what's going on. They might not can articulate it, right? Mm -hmm. But they know what's going on. So we're very proactive in sharing with them. Hey. This is what the world's doing, but this is not what we're doing. Come on. You know, this is what the world is saying, but this is not what the doctors yes. are saying. You know, and so we're very clear to recognize the enemy and attack Amen. it from a spiritual perspective. Yes. You know, and, and of course, our boys have questions. I mean, growing up, they said, you know, Daddy, why, why do I look different than you? And, right. and, and we look at them and we say, son. God made you in his image and in his likeness. Yes. You know, we celebrate your caramel skin. We celebrate your brown skin. Yes. And, you know, we're very proactive to make sure that we celebrate mm -hmm. the fact that we are all designed in the image of Christ. Yes. And so uh, their little minds, you know, you can see them going. And yes. we went to Memphis a couple months ago, stopped at the Lorraine Hotel there at the National yes. Civil Rights Museum. I saw their little minds trying to understand, you know, why would things be this way? You know, and, and why are these challenges in place? But I really and truly believe God allowed us to have our sons in our home to help steward mm -hmm. the gift that's in them to mm -hmm. help break this demonic spirit. Yes. You know, that plagues our society. Amen. Man, I'm just just in awe. Um, I, I believe God chose you to do what you do to come from your humble beginnings and for the common denominator to be music. It's so universal. And Amen. we just saw a short glimpse of your life. Um, and we just thank you for this opportunity. Let's be to be continued because there's so much more to you. But we thank God for your heart. You can just feel your heart and your passion for ministry. And we thank God for that. Well, thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. And, and it's a pleasure to be on and to share the gospel of Jesus in this format. And uh, thank you so much for what you guys do and help propagate in the gospel. And it's, it's much needed. And uh, I, I know heaven appreciates it. I actually have one more last favor to ask of you when your time permits. I would love to get you and your wife on to talk about 
uh, adoption and all of the things that you, you went through, Powerful. there is a ministry and a testimony that I believe you will help other families yes. be open to adoption, yes. but also that are going through. And I think that that would be a really great show to bring you both on. So when you have time, Will you let your agent and, the, and your booking person know, and we'll get you all back on together? Yes. And just do a special on that because that is a ministry. In That's itself. ministry, man. Absolutely. Their stories are are unreal, you know. And uh, I mean, God wrote the script, and uh, actually, keep me the music video that was out a few years ago. Actually, kind of timelines Garyan's story, my ten year old. So uh, adoption is near and dear to our hearts. So we'll definitely uh, come back and do that. Amen. Can you tell people how they can get in contact with you and if you'll introduce your song? All right. You can contact me at patrickdobson.com. That's D-O-P-S-O-N, patrickdobson.com. You can go to any uh, digital platforms, Spotify, uh, iTunes, Apple Music, Tidal, Pandora, um, Amazon to uh, check out my brand new single, Make It All Right, featuring Pastor John P. Key. Yes. And... Uh, there's ways to contact us on the website as well. So uh, looking forward to ministry in person again. Yes. And uh, hope, hope, hope to see those days come back to us. Come to the West. Come to San Diego, California. <laughs> yeah. One of the most beautiful cities in the world. God's Absolutely. chosen place right here on GOTRadio1.com. <laughs>